Howdy folks, welcome back to another Mile Arc. Today we are in France and we are going to, well, actually we're in somebody's yard. <laughs> but we are in France and we are going to fly over Paris in highest detail setting just like we did for Tokyo, except we're going to be quite a bit higher. We're going to be around cruise altitude, just about to come down in our little business jet, which is the Air Basque. Eclipse 550NG, which I just love this little thing. So, short flight, 143 nautical miles. This would be better suited for the B1900D, but we haven't flown this thing in a very long time, and this will be the first time flying it in 11.30, let alone the current update version, which is 11.32. I can't remember. I just updated my X-Plane. I didn't even look to see what it was, 31 or 32. But anyway, we are at one of the ramp starts and put us in someone's yard. In fact, if you look out the window, you get to see the see the tree right there. So where are we? What are we doing? We are starting at Lima Fox Rock, Quebec, Bravo, which is El Poet de Troyes or something. I don't know. Um, in Barbere saint sulpice I don't know speak French at all. Don't even pretend to. My wife does. She actually lived there for a while, but I don't speak it. Um... They were flying to Lima Foxtrot Oscar Echo, which is Evro Faviv for the air base in somewhere in France, on the other side of Paris. Um, since it's such a short flight, and we're going to be going so fast, um, probably only going to get to like 18,000, maybe 20,000 feet, and then we'll come down from there. So, normally when we fly this plane, I'm actually really enjoying the European Autogen, by the way. Normally when we fly this plane, we do a flight plan and we convert it to FMS and then we put it in the folder for the airplane and then it shows up on the Garmin and all that fancy stuff. But we don't have any of that today. It's such a short flight. When I did a flight plan, it just said direct to with no waypoints in between. Now, because my international research skills are terrible, I could not find an approach, an instrument approach published because I just can't find charts that are international except Canada and every once in a while in Africa I can find one. So if there's not an approach built into the Garmin with my super outdated nav data, then I will just have to do a visual approach when we get there. So not a big deal. I would like to do an instrument approach since we are flying a jet after all. However, there are some pretty famous airplay airports in the world where they land jets, full-size jets, and it's visual, so it's not unusual. Um, so we're going to try that. So it's either going to be a visual landing or an instrument approach. Just depends on what's available on the Garmin once you fire this up. Um, otherwise, I do have the destination elevation, so we can plan for that. I think that is all there is to say to preface the flight. So I think it's time we get underway. So let's see here. What are we going to do here? We got to get this ready to load passengers. Is it here now? Yeah, that's right. In this version, it's here. Um, ground. Let's get the GPU going. Whoa, that is loud in my ears. Wow. Man, oh man. Okay, so GPU is on. Chocks should be on. And battery switch. It has been such a long time. That it must be system battery. Camel lights on as desired. We don't really need them because it's super bright out. But if we did need them, we would just turn them on here. No big deal. Um, shades, they're all up, I think. Yeah, we don't need to worry about that. Um, let's see, wait, nobody in here yet, good, and the luggage is on the cart, okay, I can't remember how we get rid of that, do we just click down here, yep, okay, so let's hop outside, I think, and let's get the people loaded, so let's see, what are we gonna do, we're gonna have a full flight, which isn't that, you know, that many people, so we're gonna have an adult, an adult, an adult, and a child, and then all of their luggage and fuel we're just going to keep it oh let's go a little bit more than halfway although it's such a short flight we don't need hardly any fuel i don't think um then come out here and the chocks can come off and that's it for out here i guess so let's close that 
Uh, power levers, what's my preset for that? I don't know. It's not the same as my other airplanes. Um, power levels reset. Oh, oh, my mouse. You can see my mouse because I'm back using Bandicam to record because NVIDIA broke shadow play, at least for me. So I'd always use Bandicam. And then when I started trying flight sim in 4K, Bandicam just wouldn't cut it. The performance, it was too much. So I started using shadow play. Well, shadow play updated the other day and it broke. What did it break first? Oh, I can only record in desktop mode. It no longer recognized any of my games as games. So I record in desktop mode, which has major disadvantages. And then NVIDIA updated again. And then it would only record in the top left corner of my screen. No matter what resolution, no matter what I did, anything I recorded was just the top left fourth of my screen. And that's it. I couldn't crop it and expand it. It would be horrible pixels. So, since we were back in 1440p anyway, I decided to try Bandicam again, and there's only one frame per second hit with Bandicam in 1440p. So, that is completely acceptable, and now I can see my mouse again, and we're never going to have to worry about dropping frames anyway, because I have a lock to 30 frames per second with V-Sync, so even in the highest detail in the most densely detailed area, we're never going to drop below 30. So that one frame per second means nothing. So we're back to bandy cam, which I'm so glad about. Also, because not only can you see my mouse now, but my audio is much, much better with my voice. With Shadow Play, the audio was horrible, so I had to record secondary audio with SoundForge and then line them up and, you know, trim them and eliminate just do all these adjustments constantly. And it never did sound as good as bandy cam so now i've got my microphone set the way i want it again and everything so i'm very very excited to be back in bandy cam plus i paid for it a million years ago so it's kind of nice to use stuff you pay for so anyway enough nerdy talk um parking brake was it this preset yes parking brake is set um close the door from the touch panel i need a preset for that touch panel whoa okay let's see options no ground door then we come back here and it's closed and it's quiet oxygen pull on there we go air source to normal whoops there we go bus ties to auto there all enunciator test sounds good EL, oh, not that elt test that's down here three seconds and then arm, external lights, external lights, nav, we'll get this, well, nav could probably wait, but we'll do it anyway, right now. Gear three, green, yes, fuel quantity check, yes, that's in the middle here. Altimeter barometer, we have no weather turned on just because it's super cloudy right now in France, so we wouldn't see anything. And the whole point of this flight is to see Paris from altitude and highest detail. Um, nav then. Well, it's simply going to be um, adding a waypoint. Normally we would do menu and select a plan. I don't have one, so we're just going to add a waypoint. I've never done it this way before, actually. So what is it? Lima Foxtrot Oscar Echo Lima Foxtrot Oscar Echo Fallville. Boom. There we go. 118.8. So what I'm going to do is I'll use my time. And then we need to come down to 1500 feet so let's make that 2000 that's 2000 feet per minute so that's how calculate top of descent um so let's see that's it don't need to do weather because there's no weather uh so flight plan we'll just keep the flight plan like this when we're in the air we'll see if there's an approach by clicking on it and all this stuff track two yep fine um and then a load arrival see we'll do all that later if we can so that's it um map there we go nothing really here um let's do our north instead of true north um let's see that yeah that's so short it is paris is right here right over the top of it Okay, piece of cake, no weather or anything, obviously. All right, let's come back over here. Start battery on, right engine 
start. Can't remember if it's flick and let go. It's flick and let go. All right. Let's um hide that thing for right now. And it is starting up slowly. See, it does that sometimes. Okay, there we go. Let's let that stabilize for a second. Alrighty, there we go. I think that's stable. It's so quiet, I can't hear it all of a sudden. Very inconsistent sounds in my headphones. Plus, if you hear that weird ticking sound in the background, as about a week ago, my furnace, when it kicks in, there is something loose in the ceiling above me in the HVAC that's rattling against the drywall. So you hear this rumbling sound. I can't find, I can't pinpoint to get rid of it, but I know my microphone's picking it up, so I apologize. At least I don't have CPU sound, CPU fan sound anymore, like with the old computer. All right, check engine gauges. There we go. They're good. Left and right generators on. There's left. There's right. GPU disconnect. Um, there we go. What else? Trim set. Now this, we have to use the trim wheel. And we're just going to bring it down a little bit. I know you can't see, but it's right here. What is this stuff? I don't remember this. Obviously, with the new version of X-Plane, things are turned on that weren't turned on before, because I don't know what the heck any of that stuff is. Like these diamonds? Is that TCAS? Is that... Oh, I wonder if that's my TCAS telling me there's stuff there. Um, can I turn off TCAS on this side? Um, no, I'm sure there's something in here. There you go, TCAS. There, it is TCAS. Boom. Okay. I don't know what screen this is because I just clicked on the screen and I jumped to it. But there we go. Okay. Good. All right, so let's see here. Flaps to take off. We got a taxi now. All right, so let's um, taxi away. When we get to our runway, we'll do the rest of it. So let's hop back here. Which way are we going? Um, I have no idea here. I guess we could look at a map. Okay, so there's middle. There's runway. Let's just... Yeah, that's much shorter. Okay, let's just go to the right. So parking brake off, a little bit of throttle going here. First time using rudder pedals on this aircraft, I think. So we'll see. Oh, I also completely reconfigured my rudder pedals. Um, I'll have to show you later. If I remember, I'll show you what my settings are. But augmentation, those three sliders on the right, I brought everything down to zero. Because usually when you use payware aircraft, you want that to zero. So that you're using what the designer designed. And then the left sliders are default 50%. That's like your dead zones. I think I cranked that one for yaw up to 100 to create kind of like a huge dead zone, which there's no dead zone. See, I'm barely moving and you can see the rudder pedal going. But now instead of thinking about it being too much to actually, you know, move it around, I actually have to press the pedals quite a bit to get them to fully respond, which has been great because... Um, it's been much easier now to use rudder pedals. See, look at this. I'm using almost half right rudder, where before I would just relax my foot and it would go crazy. So augmentation, those two sliders are to zero anyway because of the payware aircraft thing. And then the one on the left, your dead zone, so to speak, in air quotes, yeah, is 100. That way it takes, I think it's 100, yeah. That way it takes um, a lot of effort to move the rudder pedals, and it's been great so far. So we won't be able to test crossman landings today because we'll win, but when we do crossman landings, hopefully it comes into play and it makes it a lot easier. So let's see here. Oh, there's a grass taxiway. All right, we're just going to taxi off to the right because that's the shortest runway or shortest place to get to a runway. And wind doesn't matter, so I'm just going to taxi away play with my presets a little bit because we're zoomed in really close for some reason well can't go back that far and i'll catch you at the end of the runway 
All right, so we're almost at the end. This little trim is already set. Flaps are set to take off. Anti-ice. Windshield defog. We're going to do anti-ice because um, it's super cold right now. What else? Taxi lights, they're already on because we're taxiing. Autopilot setup, I'll do that in a minute. Um, are we even going to use autopilot? I guess we will. So let's whip around here. Get autopilot set up. Since we don't have a co-pilot to do it right now, we have to do it ourselves. I'm trying not to get dizzy. Wow, this is crazy having steady frame rates above 10. <laughs> what a difference it makes. All right, let's get lined up. Let's stop right here and set the parking brake. All right, um, autopilot, what do we need to do? Hit Alt and then type in our altitude, which we're gonna shoot for, let's shoot for 19,000 feet. I really doubt we're gonna get that high, to be honest. Um, Alt change, so that it sees it. Nav, yes, we are going to use nav because, um, I mean, um, GPS, because we want to follow the pink line. And I, yes, let's just keep 180. So we're, yep, it's set to IS hold because it's blue. Sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't. So let's actually go, like, well, let's not do that. Let's do autopilot and pitch IS, see? IS. So there, you've seen it for yourself. It's IS 180. Because last time I didn't do that. I had to undo it and redo it again. Let's just keep it like that then. Okay. Um, otherwise, that's it. Flight director's not automatically. Yaw damper will come on when autopilot comes on. Oh, nav. Whoops, I totally screwed up the nav thing. Nav, which is sky view, which is the GPS. Okay, so. We are set there, confirm flaps, yes. Landing lights can come on now. Override switch, that is for the cabin lights. Um, shades up. And the heading bug, not gonna worry about well, heading bug happens to be where we are anyway. Check that out. Good, if I can push it though, right? Yeah, heading, yeah, doesn't matter, it's already there. Start the timer, which is this bottom one, go down two utilities and timer start i'm remembering how this works rotate 91 knots here we go parking brake is off spool this thing up gently and it should start rolling for us and i really wish i had peripheral vision so i could see the map on the right side but if i back up at all the screen turns blue so this is all we're gonna get Oh wow, see now I'm used to really sensitive rudder pedals. I gotta try a little harder. I'm not looking at my speed. Go up, rotate, please. There we go, 91 knots right on the money. And gear coming in. And flaps coming in. And smooth as silk. Let's bring back throttles to get out of the yellow. Come on, there we go. We're gonna hand fly a little bit. Once we get 180 knots, we'll engage autopilot. Looks like we need to turn around though to get to the little purple line. But I'm really enjoying the scenery. Ooh, look at roundabouts. Very European. Okay, there is almost 180 now. Autopilot gonna bounce us around, I guess, a little bit. That was kind of rough. Usually I do a little bit better, but there we go. We're on autopilot. We're out of the yellow. We're gonna keep everything pegged. And we're climbing based on airspeed not pitch so here we go let's hop outside have a look at france back up a little bit because that's a really close up view of that plane take some screenshots i just love the european autogen so wonderful so smooth look oh yeah rid of my micro stutters by the way that's the other thing i was going to talk about so v-sync on my end helps although it doesn't matter for you because you're watching the recording Threaded optimization on really, really helps. There are still a few micro stutters, like if I pan super slowly like this, I'll get like five for every 360 degrees. And it's interesting, I was thinking about that the other day too, because I was watching the X-Plane 
live presentation a couple weekends ago and they brought up micro stutters there were micro stutters and they explained why there are micro stutters so it made sense to me i understood everything they're saying it made me feel better because it's not me it's the sim and just the way it's doing math and where it has to give and take to keep doing math that's the gist of it so anyway we're getting ready to cruise now let's um have a look out the window i guess we can't see that city it's behind us already this is super awesome all right let's look at the map see how we're doing so we're gonna fly to the pink line and then we're just gonna follow the pink line and there's our destination pretty easy so we need to keep an eye on our flight time our speed will speed up of course when we hit 19,000 so shooting for 2,000 thousand feet per minute we have to do that calculation then based on the ETE and whatever we get cruising to so once we cruise I'll recalculate that see when we need to come down we might be coming down before we even get to cruise we'll see but anyway after takeoff checklist gear up flaps up autopilot engage climb landing lights off at 10 grand we're not quite there yet standard barometer at 18 doesn't matter in this case window fog as needed we're going to keep it on overwrites which can come off now i should actually put that further up in my checklist there we go so now people can play with their shades and their lights as they want to but we're not going to get into that today otherwise that's it until we start to descend so time to cruise time to do some sightseeing we're going to fly over paris with highs detail cranked up in the sim and um clear skies so it's up there somewhere we're going to directly over the center of it no custom scenery it's all default scenery that's how i roll for the most part and um, or version 4 mesh if it's available i'm pretty sure this is version 4 mesh this part of the world is covered so sightseeing for you i'm going to keep an eye on some calculations and everything and i'll cut back at top of descent And just like that, we blew through top descent because one of my children crawled out of bed and snuck up on me and needed some help. So we're at 19,000 feet. We need to get down to roughly 2,000. So that's 17,000 to come down. 1,000 feet per minute is 17 minutes. We're already at 14 minutes ETE. So we are way behind schedule on coming down. I'm looking for Paris, though. I don't see it yet. But let's get this started. Um, we have a new altitude of... Let's say 2,000 feet. We should be out of autopilot by then. Let's do alt change. And let's do... Click on this. We'll do negative. 1,000 feet per minute. And it'll come down until we get too fast. And it'll actually slow us down. Or, or slow down our pitch. See how we're going up now because of our speed. So I'm bringing back throttles. And it should find 1,000. And it should stay there. And then I keep my throttles cranked until it starts to rise so 1018 there we go we give a little bit more throttle in there alrighty so that's how that's gonna work and then at um, 10,000 we need to be down to 250 but we can keep our speed up for right now so throttles back in a little bit otherwise descent checklist barometer doesn't matter landing lights at 10 grand that's fine shades up override switch that'll be when we get closer flaps under 200 so 
Not much to do other than weather until we get close to the ground. So I don't see any detail of pairs. Oh, wait, is that it over there? Are we missing it? No. Um, I don't know the area, to be honest. I should really check a map because I don't see any pairs detail. We are going to jump outside here in a second. Otherwise, very quick flight, of course. I had just enough time to help my child, and now I have to land a plane. What is that building out there? Oh, it's not. All right, let's hop outside and um, look around. I don't know why it's so close to that airplane when we go outside. Otherwise, it looks like we've gone from farmland to parks and things. That's cool. Um, I don't know where Paris is. It must be up in front of us, I would think. Okay, so yeah, I just looked at a map, so I was right. So this, these rivers, see this river here? With the mouse and then this river here they join and then paris is this area here so this is paris i mean the greater area comes out but downtown is here so we will see how this looks from this altitude we're going to hit it at about twelve thousand feet probably because um we're coming down and i don't know how much is going to render in from here but otherwise Everything looks good. I'm trying to see if you can recognize any parks from here. Um, this looks like this is Parc Bois de Vincennes or something. Not exactly sure. Um, this must be the big airport, I would imagine. No, it's Airport de Paris Ori. Okay, whatever airport that is, I honestly don't know. Um, Otherwise, once we cross these rivers, if you look to the right, that's where the main part of Paris is. So, good. So, I'm very excited to see what this is going to look like in great detail. So, what I'm going to do, what do we need to do? Um, nothing. 5,000 feet, we've got to come down 25 miles or 25 knots. That's not a big deal. Okay, see, it's not keeping us at 1,000 feet per minute anymore because we're going too fast. See? So, bring back throttles. There we go. 10 minutes on that. I really don't care to be honest because um, we're going to end up circling to land anyway, I think. I guess we can try to look for an approach. I just don't want to miss the pair of scenery. Let's super quickly see if we can load an arrival. Um, select final. Any. I really don't care. None. 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 That's not what I meant. Load arrival. Um, ooh, ILS. So we do an RNAV or an ILS? I don't know. Let's see if ILS works. I really don't know. I don't know what this means. Okay. What just happened? Um. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Let's just go for it. Let's see what the airplane... Oh, no. You know what I might do, though? It might spin us all the way around to catch a waypoint way the heck back there. Yeah, it might. Um. Look at the buildings. Hey. Okay, let's just let this let's just let this run its course. And check out the buildings over there. Um, should we use a uh, let's see. Let's use this view. That works a little bit. Alrighty, so because of our altitude, the detail isn't totally detailed off at the city part. Where are we? But I don't think Paris has that many tall buildings anyway. And this is again using OSM data. So it's going to draw what the data says. But otherwise, seems to be going pretty well. A lot of detail below us. Look at those rail stations. You can see by the roads, though, where the city center is. So that's really cool. Very happy with it. Our frame rates are still nice and high, of course. We got some micro stutters, but again, that's not my fault. That's just how the sim is doing math. Um, anyway, looking for a good screenshot here. Very cool. Let's see, what are we doing for speed, altitude, everything? That's fine. I really don't know what this is going to do for our approach or anything now, because our lines went away. I'm just going to try to trust the autopilot. <laughs> we'll see. A little bit more sightseeing. I'm going to figure out where we are and where we're going, and I'll catch you in a little bit.
So I looked at the map, and um, it looks like it's lining us up with Runway 22 ILS, because that would be coming out here. I mean Runway 4, sorry, coming out here, and then Runway 4. But this is Runway 22, which would be the other side. So is that back course Runway 4? Not sure. We're going to find out together. Kind of goofy, but I guess if we're a big plane, we're going to have to come away out here. But um, we've been at 8 minutes for like 5 minutes, so I'm slowing down our descent. In fact, I was thinking of even just kind of cutting off our descent for right now. Because I have no idea what we're doing. Um, yeah, always we're just going to go right down 2,000 feet and bug everybody. So I'm just going to probably take over. I kind of wish now that I had just done it manually, like my plan originally was to do it manually. <laughs> and land visually, but I wanted to see what happens when it loads an approach without knowing any idea where we were. And it turns out to be a very bad idea. But we'll ride it out. It's going to like triple our flight time though, because <laughs> we could have landed by now. But anyway, back to sightseeing. I just want to throw that tidbit in that we're lost. Kind of, not really. And I have some regrets, but we're just going to ride this out, see what happens. So even though the plan told autopilot to go to Foxshot, Foxshot 22, we're getting farther away. Which means we're not going there. So I'm just going to click on here and go direct. And then we're just going to land visually like I thought. Because when you use autopilot, it's very literal, right? Autopilot doesn't screw up. It's the human that screws up. And since I don't have a chart, I don't know where these... Um, SIDS, stars, sorry. Since they don't know where the stars are, because they don't know the area, um, we just gotta, we just gotta use the GPS to get there manually, then we'll visually land once you see the runway. Because I was sending us somewhere far away, so, um, I'm gonna let the plane do its thing. Let's start coming down, I think. What's our time? Seven minutes, we gotta come down. To 2000, so when this gets to f five or so, then we will wait. We got to come to how many six when this gets down to six, we'll resume our descent and keep an eye on our speed because we're speeding up. And I'll catch you in a moment. Alright, four minutes to go, 4,400 feet above where we want to be, so we'll keep it at where we are, 1,000 feet per minute. Alright, shades up, override switch on again, um, keep an eye on our speed, flaps at 200, gear at 200, and then flaps again at 140, touchdown approach at 99, touchdown between 76 and 99, let's see how much of that I remember. Otherwise, we're just about there. I don't know if we can see the runway yet. Yeah, the runway's quite a ways out there. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to do a pattern without knowing the area. I think we're going to have to fly over and then circle to land. Because um, without knowing the area, without knowing the landmarks, being completely VFR, without a chart, is a dumb idea. But then we don't know where we are. So, whoa, why is my visual so strange? Like that, anyway. Um, otherwise, it's gonna do it again, isn't it? Doc on it. Let me move this up one, set my preset. Now look to the side. There we go. Actually, I see the runway well enough now that I think we can actually, um, we can do this without having a circle to land. 
So let's see. Let's start slowing down to like 180 or so. And let's set our heading bug to 22 if I can think of how to do this here. Um, how can I click on heading and do 220? No, not 220. 40. Why do I have that backwards? I'm having a hard time today with this. There we go. So now we know the orientation of the runway. So now we know we're doing kind of like a base leg. And it's just a matter of keeping an eye out there and then churning in when we're supposed to. Otherwise, too early for flaps, too early for gear. We want to be under 200 for that. We'll do that stuff on final. So let's keep an eye out here. And when we're perpendicular to the runway, we'll turn on our final. All right, here we go. Runway is right there just about. So let's slow this thing way down because that came up way faster than I thought. Let's see if we can avoid a go around. I mean, this flight's already such a mess. Let's just make it more of a mess, I guess. All right, gear coming down. Can't see anything. It's there somewhere. Where are you, runway? There it is. First set of flaps coming down. And second set of flaps coming down. Final approach at 99, touchdown 76. Where are you? There you are. We're really high. Let's just see what happens here. Like I said, we've already made such a mess out of this flight. We might as well have a messy landing too, huh? All right, um, come on. Throttles are all the way back, so we can't do much about that. We don't have spoilers. So we're just gonna nose dive it here. Terrible pilots today. Well, we've had so many wonderful, wonderful flights. I guess we're due to have a screw up. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've screwed up this bad. Coming in too high, coming in too fast. Getting lost with the GPS. Let's see what we can do here. We're gonna land very long, but that'll be okay. In real life, this would definitely be a go-around situation. No hesitation there. Let's check out the bullet train. While we make this horrible approach. Come on. We're at the right airport, right? Yep, because that'd be even more hilarious. Alrighty, we're gonna nose down and level off. We bleed off a bunch of speed. We have a long enough runway, we can just float over the runway till we get the speed we want. Our approach is 12 too high. But that's okay, there we bleed off speed. There we go. We're coming in way too fast, so let's just level off and bleed off speed. Okay, touchdown at any time now. And grease it. Let it set itself down. There we go. Nose wheel down gently. Apply some brakes. A little bit of rudder. And roll it out. Flaps coming in. I don't think there's going to be a place to turn off because it's not a modeled airport. So we'll just let this thing roll its way down here. Looks like we can pull off to the right. So let's use rudder pedals. I was using the yoke like a steering wheel again. <laughs> All right, let's get off here. Then we'll tidy this thing up a little bit before we park. Come on. Here we go. I really want to move my view back, but then the textures turn blue because I can't see anything. If there's any plane on the planet that really would benefit from track AR, it's definitely this one, isn't it? All right, let's get past the stop line. Come on. You can do it. It takes a lot to get this thing rolling but once you do it takes off so you gotta be careful all right here we go let's stop set the parking brake and taxi lights and come on landing lights let's turn off nav what else do we do after landing stop the clock man we added a good 10 minutes to that flight time that we didn't need to did we all right let's see here all right switch and come off now and all right so here we go find a place to park this thing um, parking brake off. Let's see, which way should we go? Um, I don't see any parking because it's a 2D airport. Alright, let's just pull over. Let's just pull over here. Just because we don't have a parking lot. So we'll just pull over here and say this is a parking space and we'll shut this thing down. Alright, let's just stop right here. 
Is that the parking brake? It's like I'm saying, I would like to back my view up, like to here. First of all, the seat's in the way, and then here the textures are blue. So I have to go like this, which is a bummer because it's really close. I can't see anything. Oh, well, we'll make the best of it. All right, so shutting this thing down, what do we do? Parking brake, throttles idle for one minute. Anti-ice off. Window fog off if applicable. That was loud. Wow, that's really loud. I didn't realize how loud that was. Air source off. Turn off the engines once they've been idle. And connect the GPU like so. Start battery off. External lighting off. Okay, where were we here? Left and right generators can come off. Bus ties can come off. System battery comes off. Open the door. Like so. And set the chocks. There we go. Then we'll hop outside. So welcome to France. Kind of a different sightseeing. When we did Tokyo, we were nice and low and slow. For Paris, we were at cruise, so we didn't see all the detail that you may have been expecting, but that really wasn't the point because we've already done that several times now. I just wanted to see full detail over a major urban area from cruise. It was a low, clu low cruise, but it was still cruise. So that's the point. So hopefully you're not too disappointed because the flight was the point. I thought he was screwing up navigation. Turns out my navigation was fine. I just misread the Y and the Z. So navigation was fine. I just didn't trust it. So that was my big mistake there and then landing we came in too high but we still had an extremely smooth touchdown so we recovered just fine so some things could have been better some things definitely could have been worse hopefully you enjoyed the flight i certainly did if you're a big subscriber thank you for coming to support if you found me by accident please like please subscribe please share with your friends i have no idea where we're going next for the first time ever i don't have any flight plans at the moment i'm going to plan about a dozen flights tomorrow start flying them so you'll find out where we're going when I find out where we're going, and I'll catch you on the next one.